welcome back to the Hard Rombox News Corn. Another week, another set of topics to get through, many of which are updates from last week's News Corner. In fact, last week, shortly after we put out our video, AMD confirmed that the Ryzen 9 3950X is delayed until November and will launch alongside Threadripper, but I'm sure everyone has seen that news by now. Hopefully this week we don't have any major news stories break late on a Friday after we get this episode up. So. Fingers crossed, but for now, let's get into the regular topics for this week. Last week, we talked about the Ryzen 5 3500 and the Ryzen 5 3500X, which seem to be the next processes in line to feature in AMD's Zen 2 series. We saw a few bits and pieces of information and perhaps a few specs as well, but that's all firmed up this week thanks to a few early listings of these processes. We'll start with the Ryzen 5 3500X, which has appeared in the CPU support list for MSI's Meg X570 godlike motherboard. The CPU is listed as having a 3.6 GHz base clock and 32 MB of level 3 cache, along with a 65 Watt TDP. We aren't getting any other information from this page specifically, but it's widely expected the 3500X will be a 6-core, six 6-thread six CPU, so same base clocks and cache configuration as the Ryzen 5 3600, but lacking SMT. Previous leaks have also suggested a 4.1 GHz boost clock, so a little lower than the 3600 as well. The Ryzen 5 3500 has shown up in inside an HP Pavilion gaming desktop on Amazon, listed alongside a GeForce GTX 1650 GPU and 8GB of RAM, the Ryzen 5 3500 is said to have 6 cores and a 3.4GHz base clock. This is also expected to be a 6 core 6 thread CPU, and it makes sense that clock speeds are lower than the 3500X, which differs from the previous reports we saw. Whether the 3500 lacks features like XFR and has a lower cache remains to be seen, given we don't have full product specs just yet. However, the HP Pavilion desktop is set to launch on October 20, so it's pretty likely we'll be seeing these new AMD Ryzen CPUs in under a month. Fingers crossed they won't just be exclusive to OEM systems like the Ryzen 5 2500X, because there could be decent demand for a Zen 2 CPU around the $150 mark with 6 cores even if it lacks SMT. It looks like the Ryzen 5 3500 and 3500X aren't the only new Zen 2 processors AMD is set to launch shortly. Listings have appeared online for a Ryzen 9 3900, which suggests that AMD might launch a whole selection of new Ryzen processors at once next month. That's a fairly typical thing to do, you know, you get the big launches out of the way first, then fill out the lineup with more entry-level products and more niche offerings like the Ryzen 9 3900. Information from multiple sources, as collated by Nantech, suggests that the Ryzen 9 3900 will be a 65 watt version of the Ryzen 9 3900X, so it retains the same 12 core 24 thread design with 64 megabytes of level 3 cache, but drops clock speeds to fit inside a much tighter 65 watt limit compared to 105 watts for the 3900X as the rain picks up outside. This means base clocks fall from 3.8 to 3.1 gigahertz and the boost clock possibly hits just 4.2 gigahertz compared to 4.6 gigahertz. The Ryzen 9 3900 will also be available in a pro version for business and enterprise customers in addition to a Ryzen 7 Pro 3700, both at 65 watts. Typically these pro SKUs add various security and management features, although they are fundamentally the same silicon. It will definitely be curious to see how AMD goes about binning a product like the Ryzen 9 3900. The specifications we're seeing here make it a lot lower clocked than the 3900X out of the box. But will it clock to similar levels as the 3900X in practice or when overclocked? Having a 65 watt version of this chip is good news for OEMs that might want to build systems around a CPU that's cheaper to cool and probably cheaper to buy. But if it's also available in the general market, it will be interesting to see how it slots in and performs. In Intel CPU news, we're starting to see retailer listings for Intel's upcoming Core i9-9900KS, which is set to launch next month, offering a 5GHz all-core frequency out of the box. Intel has revealed some of the specs. Last week, we also learned the chip will likely feature a 127 watt TDP to match its higher 4.0 GHz base clock. But with these retailer listings, we're getting a good idea of the price. One such retailer is M-Wave, one of the local guys down here in Australia. They've put up the Core i9-9900KS at $899 Australian dollars, which converts to around $550 US after you remove Australia's sales tax. Like with many of these conversions, it is important to take tax into account. US prices are listed without sales tax included, while in Australia, sales tax is already included in the price. So 
when converting between the currencies, we need to remove Australia's 10% tax in the process, and the same goes with converting from European prices. Another listing, as spotted by Momomo on Twitter, has the 9900KS priced at $603.66, so that's a little higher than the converted Australian price. Given the 9900K is currently available for around $475, I would have thought around $550 would be the spot for the 9900KS. You know, a bit of a premium to get those all core frequencies with that overclocking, but nothing outrageous. $600 sounds like too much to me given where the CPU market is sitting right now, but I guess you never know. It'll also be interesting to see how the 9900KS differs to a 9900K that's given an all core overclock to five gigahertz. We've seen that the majority of 1900Ks you can buy can do a five gigahertz all core provided you have decent cooling. Will the 1900KS offer a better bin, perhaps getting there with lower voltages? I mean, who really knows, but when they're available, we'll get one and give it the full benchmark treatment as we always do. Last week, we also talked about the upcoming NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Ti, which is rumored to launch on October 22nd. Well, apparently another GPU in NVIDIA's GTX 16 series is expected on that date in the form of the GTX 1660 Super. Yep, it's getting to be a bit of a confusing series over in NVIDIA land, but two rumors from video cards and Chinese website IT Home say that this is what we'll be getting. According to video card sources, which appear to come from ASUS, the GTX 1660 Super will use the same GPU as the GTX 1660, so the same T116 configuration with 1408 CUDA cores. The difference between the models is that the Super card gets 6 gigabytes of 14 gigabits per second GDDR6 compared to 6 gigabytes of 8 gigabits per second GDDR5 with the non-Super model. This would give the 1660 Super more memory bandwidth than the 1660 Ti, but with fewer CUDA cores to work with. We'd see performance gains in some situations due to this extra bandwidth over the non-super non-TI model, and of course clock speeds could be increased as well, though there's no word on that at this stage. Sounds like an interesting month ahead for GPU releases, particularly in the lower end of the market. Will be great to see renewed competition there and perhaps something from AMD as well. Next up we have some rumored details regarding AMD's upcoming B550 chipset for mid-range and entry-level motherboards. This info comes from HKEPC, which revealed B550 specs in a motherboard review for some reason. Unlike a B450, B550 is a bit more than just a refresh of what came before it. As expected, it looks like B550 won't support PCIe 4.0 connectivity like its higher end X570 brother. However, it will provide improved connectivity through the chipset itself. The uplink to AM4 CPUs will remain as a PCIe 3.0 times 4 link, but B550 will now have a baseline of 8 PCIe 2.0 lanes out of the chipset up from 6 with B450 and matching X470 boards. On top of that, B550 will reportedly be able to support up to 8 SATA ports, up from 4 with B450 and 6 with X470, or up to 4 additional PCIe 3.0 lanes depending on the configuration the motherboard vendor chooses. This customizable approach is similar to X570 but quite cut down due to a lack of PCIe 4.0 support. For example, X570 supports 4 baseline SATA ports, but that can be configured up to 12. It also has 8 PCIe 4.0 lanes out of the chipset as standard, but that can be configured up to an additional 8 if the motherboard maker doesn't want to offer additional SATA ports. What is provided through the chipset is, of course, in addition to 20 PCIe lanes coming out of the CPU itself, usually split into a x16 configuration for the GPU and x4 for an NVMe SSD. With B550, it looks like a second PCIe NVMe SSD could be supported through the chipset thanks to a configuration option allowing for an extra 4 lanes of PCIe 3.0. This all sounds like B550 will be a meaningful upgrade for mid-range Ryzen owners and should be a decent choice over expensive X570 boards and old to X470 boards, depending of course on the motherboard quality. PCIe 4.0 will still be a reason to go X570, but if that's not something you really need, then B550 could become the go-to choice. Right now it seems that B550 will be a Q4 launch, we don't know exactly when, but it sounds like OEMs are gearing up to offer B550 in the not too distant future, so stay tuned. Final topic for this week, Global Foundries has launched a new process node called 12LP+, which takes everything they've learned from their 12LP and 14LPP nodes and improves upon it, offering improved density along with efficiency gains. It doesn't go all the way to offering 7 nanometer like performance, and of course Global Foundries canned their 7 nanometer node a while back but it offers a stepping stone that they say will be quite cost effective for customers. 12LP Plus offers either a 40% improvement in power over their previous 12LP node at the same performance 
or a 20% improvement in performance at the same power. They're also touting a 15% reduction in area for the same transistor count. Those are much larger gains than Global Foundry's achieved moving from 14 LPP to 12 LP. So you'd think a bit of their engineering work on 7 nanometers has translated into decent gains for 12 LP+. This new node will be ready for taping out in the second half of 2020, with volume production expected in 2021. That's it for this week's News Corner. As always, consider subscribing to get this segment in your inbox every week. Grab some merch like this if you want to support the channel from store.hardwareunbox.com. We also have a Patreon page where you can gain access to our Discord chat and monthly live streams, and I'll catch you in the next one.